Hello, how are you? I know it's been a long time since I've done an info video about uh, studying medicine at this stage in life, but I've had a few requests over the last few weeks and I promised you all I'd get back to you, but I figured this is the handiest way that I can post the video. You guys can have a look at it, look back at it, re recommend it to your friends. Uh, and they were just, this is just a synopsis of some of most of the questions I've been asked. If there's anything else, feel free, send me a DM or write it down here and I'll see if I can get back to you. The first question I get asked, especially by Irish people about the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, or CSI, if you're thinking of studying there, is a difference between graduate entry and mature entry and age profile. Now, I'm doing graduate entry medicine. There is a video here earlier about getting in via GAMSAT. You have to sit a god awful exam. It's the worst experience ever. Get through that. Medicine won't be a problem. I mean, I've survived so far. Um, that video explains all that and um, you need to have a 2-1 degree basically and sit this exam, get a certain mark and you're in. Sinead, it doesn't matter what degree you did in your past life, what you've done in your past life, what you've studied, what you haven't studied, it's all the same. So that's the first thing first, get yourself in there. So that's what I did, I did graduate entry. Some people have asked me the difference between mature and graduate and obviously because I've only done graduate I can't really talk about mature entry but from what I can gather is that the age profile is wider and mature and um, it's a longer course as well graduate entry takes four years mature is five or six years depending on if you have to do pre-med and um, but there might be more Irish mature students there in there with you if that's what you're interested in my graduate class the vast majority of the class are Americans and Canadians with some people from Africa London uh, we have a French person in there, some Australians, a Swiss person, and a small cohort of Irish people. The vast majority do have science backgrounds, the, and the age profile is anything, because it's graduate, you have to be at least in your early 20s before you're in there. The age profile is mostly, I suppose, mid to late 20s. There's one or two people in their early 30s, like myself, and one or two outliers a bit older. From what I can gather, the mature class has more. So. It depends what you're into. I'm personally glad I did uh, graduate entry because it just means I'll get out working sooner and the pace is quick and it's fast. Which brings me on to the next thing, which is the pace of it. Graduate is intense. You're going to fly through it. It's going to be really, really hard. You're going to find yourself wishing so often, what have I done? Why did I get myself in here? But it's totally manageable. Just remember me, the person with a degree in Irish and psychology who worked for 10 years with no science background, didn't even do it for my leaving cert, got through it. So therefore you will too, if you're in any way interested. Um, but the pace is fast and they're mad into their anatomy in first year. You will be doing anatomy till it comes out of your ears from your first day in school to the last day of the year. That includes going to anatomy practicals every Monday and Tuesday afternoon for a few hours in the anatomy room. You're getting tested on your anatomy verbally. They call it card signing. It is torturous, it is scary as hell. But trust me, you will know your anatomy by the end of it. Uh, that's done every second week. And by the end of the year, you will have done the whole body from top to toe. You won't know all of it. Well, some people might, I certainly don't, but you will have a very good overview and you'll have gone through it at such a pace that you'll be wondering, how the hell did I know this just a few short weeks ago and didn't know it and the pace you learn things. That is the big thing, graduate thing. In first year, you are absolutely thrown into it, straight away into it, but it's one of the best ways to learn. The next thing is, as far as I know, RCSI are the only college in the country that gets you out into hospital placement in first year, which can be quite scary. So after Christmas, we did one day a week, and then in June, we did a whole month long placement, and that breaks up into two sections. So you do two, two weeks in medical and two weeks in surgical. So I did two weeks in nephrology, for example, and two weeks in upper GI surgery. And you learn more in that month than you've learned the whole year. It's a bit like when you go and you do your degree and then you go out working for the first time and you realize I knew nothing coming in from college. Same thing here. It is brilliant. It reinforces everything you've learned and also kind of reminds you why you're doing it, which is kind of nice. Um, backgrounds. This is another question people ask me about. What are people's backgrounds? Um, from all sorts. Obviously, I come from journalism. There's people in my class from retail. There's a lawyer in there. There's people, obviously, with lots of medical backgrounds, different things, be they perhaps nursing, research, lab work, blood work, all that kind of stuff, um, which is definitely help. They will tell you it's not a help. They will say, oh, sure, I didn't know any of this or I learned it so long ago. But the fact is they have it in their bank it will make first year easier for them. You will catch up if you're somebody without a medical background or a science background, but it does take time. And don't worry if you do feel like that Muppet who didn't even understand the word the lecturer was talking about. It all makes sense in the end. Um, but those people, they will say, oh, it didn't make a difference. It totally makes a difference. It absolutely does. You will catch up. Um, even me, I was amazed the difference in my marks between Christmas and the summer exams. Um, I was well up on the curve at that point. I remember it was Christmas, like embarrassingly low on some of my marks. Thanks be to God, I passed them. But it's just worth to keep in mind, 
we all survive. It just might take some of us a bit longer to get there. People ask me about supports. I've had a few people message me about financial support or maternity support. Um, I'm not sure about either. I do know there are supports there and I do know there's an office in there, the Sarah office, who will take any call, ask any questions of them and they will answer you because they're really, really helpful there and they want to make sure people survive. And that is the best thing about RCSI. There are times when you might feel like it's all getting on top of you, but they really want you to pass and they're going to help you pass and they'll drag you over the line if they have to and they'll give you every support and they will try and find you every support if you need it. So go to them if you need it. On another note though, when it comes to support, you can't beat the support of your classmates. If you do decide you're doing it, find your posse, find your people. I found myself a great bunch of people. There's a photo here. And um, these people have kept me sane and we've had great fun and laughs as well. I mean, that's the thing, it is fun. You might be killed sometimes at the work, but it's great fun. Ah yes, work. This is the other question people ask me. Can you work? You can. I did it, which again should be motivation for people because I was learning everything from scratch aside from maybe the psychology module, which I had a bit of a head start on. Um, but it's tough. If you are going to work, I would advise if your work is working for minimum wage in a shop or something like that, I'd say, you know what, how badly do you need it? You're probably already in debt because you took out a loan to pay for the fees. Don't do it. Um, you need that time unless you're making a lot of money in a few short hours or if you're getting good bang for your book, like for example, there's a few physios in my class and they do a few sessions here and there and that really helps them. Obviously I do my sports journalism and sports psychology and that helps me. And um, if you are going to work though, you have to accept you probably won't have a life. So what I did was I treated school during the week, Monday to Friday as a full on full-time job. That meant being in school, the hours are really long. Like some of the classes would start at eight in the morning and you wouldn't be out till six in the evening. I'd come home, eat my dinner and study. And that was it until 10 or 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And then I left the weekends free then for work. Unless, of course, I had an anatomy card signing that Monday. And that meant working and panic studying about the body. Um, yeah, God, I'm glad I'm not doing that anymore. Um, yeah, that's how I would do it. Work as possible, but just be realistic about it and accept you can't do everything. It's a bit like the lie they tell women. You can't have it all. And you can't have it all either when you're studying graduate medicine. Exams are traumatic and the way they mark them, even people who know a lot about the subject will come out saying, God, I don't know if I passed that. I'm like, you don't know you passed it. How the hell do you think I feel? But you get through it. And like I said, I survived it. You will too. Finally, 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 finally. Top tips, things I wish I knew now that I didn't know then. And books, there are certain books that will help you learn. For example, I saw Dr. Darren O'Leary talk about this book. This book, I don't know if you can see it there. The Oxford Book of Clinical Medicine. It is amazing. This gives you all the conditions that you're likely to see in a hospital scenario. Like for example, stroke here, invol abnormal involuntary movements, thalassemia, anemia, chronic kidney disease. And it kind of runs through the symptoms, what to look for, what questions to ask them and what to prescribe them. This is a godsend. This saves lives on hospital wards, but it also saves lives in exams. This has kept me sane. Following on from that this baby the top 100 drugs not as exciting as it sounds we are not talking about cocaine or heroin kids we are talking about the top 100 drugs you that you as a doctor at some stage in future will be prescribing again it goes through the symptoms well, how it works why the drug works how it operates and then it explains how to prescribe it it's really really helpful and it's explained in simple english because like i said sometimes these people lecturing us don't understand that some of us don't understand what they're talking about if you are thinking of studying at rcsi here are two books that I wish I knew last summer that we should have. And um, the first one is Monkhouse Clinical Anatomy. Stanley Monkhouse was the head of the anatomy department for a long time. He's not there anymore, but he wrote this really cool book that explains anatomy and kind of explains it the way RCSI teaches it. You can have all your grades anatomy books in the world, but this book is their Bible. So if you can get on with this book, this is kind of how they'll ask the questions, this is how they style their exam questions. And he also helpfully wrote a book about the cranial nerves, which you'll be studying in second semester if you're doing graduate medicine, and they will break your heart. Uh, they're really hard to learn. You think, oh, it's just the 12 cranial nerves, I can learn that off. And then you realize they have branches and they all branch off and they all go to different things and they all do different things around your face. But you know what? If you're planning to buy that yacht and want to do Botox in the future, you've got to learn your facial muscles, people. And finally, just to remind you kind of of how they kind of do mess with your head in RCSI in the best possible way. They challenge you. This book, uh, Stanley Monkhouse's book of clinical anatomy, he has a line at the end, and this is kind of, he's a bit, I suppose he had a bit of a laugh when he was teaching it as well, and why wouldn't you, I suppose? Um, the last line of the book, if you feel the need to throw this book at someone and do so, you might be preserving your mental health, but you must be prepared to take the consequences. 
So even he knows it's hard. But this book, when you compare it to the size, I don't have it here to hand at the moment, it's the size of Grey's Anatomy. Okay, it doesn't have the diagrams and stuff, but explains very, very simply how things work, why they work. And uh, I wish if I had this book last summer, this time last year, I would have been reading this and soaking it in and just learning how they teach things in the methodology. Because like I said, your first year is anatomy heavy. And if I knew that, I would definitely be reading that. So that's it. It's just a quick synopsis. If I said any other questions, they were just the main ones I was asked. A few things to give you a head start. Who will be in the class with you? What kind of class will you have? The age profile, supports, exams. If I've left anything out, feel free to get in touch. But uh, hopefully this covers it. All right. Thanks a million. Slank boy.